Dave is working to reinvent banking across many areas of finance, from no interest cash advances and income creation to unbounceable checks and more. Get up to $500 instantly with extra cash, no interest and no credit checks needed. Go to the App Store and download the Dave app. That's D-A-V-E and help build yourself a better financial future. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, we get to take a glimpse into a part of the porn industry that I am not terribly familiar with. So I'm really excited that my guest today um, is an American woman who moved abroad and has since become one of the most famous porn stars working in Japan. Please welcome June Lovejoy. Hi, June. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. No, I, um, I, like I said, I'm so excited to have you here. I've had quite a few guests ask me about looking into what, um, I guess you call JAV, right? The Japanese right. adult video industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it's definitely one that I'm not familiar with. I've heard things, but I don't really know much about it. Okay. And I'm sure it's quite different from, um, the American adult industry. So I'm really excited to like learn all about it. Great. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. So you, you actually grew up though in America. So how yes. did you end up in Japan? So I grew up in America and I was born and raised there. Um, and around the time that I finished college, I actually got a scholarship to study abroad in Japan and I'd always wanted to live in Japan. So it was just absolutely perfect. And I, I moved to Japan, uh, finished school here, learned the language and then entered or started working at a regular company. When I say regular, I mean non-adult company. Um, and okay. It's like I ended up here, school and work. So what drew you to Japan in the first place? Oh, I, I just, as a kid, I just really liked it. I'm really nerdy. I, I, behind me, you can see uh, all of this nerd stuff that I spend too much money on. Um, as a kid, I think a lot of people my age can relate, but I grew up with like Sailor Moon, One Piece, Dragon Ball. And I was really fascinated with Japanese culture, especially the pop culture side. Um, and thankfully that turned into like academic pursuits where I wanted to understand the language and the culture. Uh, so yeah, but it, from nerdy roots, definitely. So to me, like when I, the fact that you're fluent in Japanese to me feels just, it looks like such a difficult language for an English speaker to conquer because first of all, learning another language is hard enough as right. it is, but like, right. it's an entirely different alphabet and also like sentence structure and, mm -hmm. um, just, there's so many things that are different about it. How, how hard is it? How hard was it for you to learn language? Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of insane. When I came to Japan, I, I don't know why I did this. I'm grateful I did, but I turned all of my electronic devices, every single thing I owned, I put it in Japanese setting, even if I couldn't read it, I obviously could not read it. And I put like a personal ban on myself. I wouldn't allow myself to hang out with anyone who spoke English. And then any media I consumed, like books, music, movies, I wouldn't allow it to be anything other than Japanese. So it was hard, um, but I kind of threw myself into the deep end and then just hope for the best. And for that, I'm really grateful. But I, it was, Again, like I said in the last question for my last answer, I like nerdy stuff. So even if I couldn't understand everything that I was watching or reading or listening to, um, because it was something I wanted to watch or wanted to play like a game, um, it wasn't too hard. But um, I think with more so living in Japan, I felt more, I felt faced more difficulties than necessarily with the language because I already wanted to learn the language and I was already making active efforts to learn so or do so, mm. sorry. So what, so then what were your challenges besides the language about living in Japan? Uh, so even though I can speak the language just fine, um, and I understand the culture and all of that, I will forever be an outsider, which is really hard to come to terms, especially as an American, because there's some, there could be people in America, like in San Diego, where I went, like I grew up mostly, um, there can be people who look just like the Japanese people here that I meet every day and they are American and I don't think anything differently of them. But here in Japan, 
I will always, forever, no matter how long I live here, no matter how well I speak the language, be an outsider. And that that's really painful. I um, There's good things and bad things. I can get more work because I'm a little bit rare, rare here. But mm -hmm. I, when I want to just be me and not be someone to be like sold or uh, like towed around or show off on TV, um, it's kind of stressful because I feel like I can never turn off that outsider feeling and never just relax. Um, but you stare at that. a lot too. Yeah. Okay. Are you talking about that then in your personal life and work? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. I would say personal life more. I, well, even in work, in the porn industry, I feel like I feel at home more because it isn't really so much of like outsider versus us because in the porn industry, it already is a bunch of outsider, social outsiders. So That's I feel true. like with that, we can kind of bond and I'm already a part of the, like the porn team, which is really nice. Um, and part of why I really enjoy working in the industry here. But especially in my day to day life uh, and now with COVID, there's not a lot of foreigners here. This isn't me saying, oh, I'm so beautiful, oh, blonde, wow, lovely. No, but in Japan, it isn't as common because everyone has black hair, dark, dark eyes. Um, and you get stared at. And I wasn't used to that because in America, I recently went back to America as well last last month. Nobody looks at me at all. It is lovely. No one is staring at me. But even if I just go to the supermarket, little kids will look, older people will look. They don't mean anything by it, but they haven't really seen someone like you. So they're going to stare. So when you first moved to Japan, you started off working a corporate job, right? Right. And so what, what was that um, like? What was that job and what was it like? Uh, I can't, I said in India, I can't say the company's name, but basically mm -hmm. I helped. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I taught or like assisted Japanese companies on how to market their stuff to non, a non-Japanese audience and how to okay. interact with, especially like English speakers on a corporate level. So the polite way to interact with a Japanese business person is entirely different than how you would interact with an American business person. Um, and so I helped guide that. And I wasn't an English teacher, but I was the only English speaking person on the team and the only foreigner that that company had ever had. Um, so I don't think they were equipped to deal with a foreigner, um, even though because my Japanese was fine and I could speak English as well. So they obviously really wanted to hire me. And I really loved the company itself. I, I've always loved that company. Not now, obviously, but um, it's a it's a really big company. And I. Whenever something would happen, uh, like something didn't go well, they would use me as a scapegoat. They would say, oh, June doesn't understand Japanese culture. and that's why this deal didn't go through or June didn't speak enough, like uh, well enough Japanese to do the proper level of communication that was needed for this deal. And in reality, I had nothing to do with those projects, but the higher ups, they don't look that like um, microscopic at things. And it was very stressful because I thought, oh, maybe I, I felt like gaslighted. I was like, oh, my, my Japanese isn't good enough. I need to study harder, work harder. So I don't, make a problem for everyone or cause problems for everyone when in reality now looking back oh it was they was just a bunch of really bad people you just using me as as a reason for them for their own lack uh like problems or failures mm -hmm. um and there was a lot of like sexual harassment not not done to me but most heartbreaking thing that i still really regret not being able to solve um for those people is we would have new hires and they would really like me because I'm very friendly. I'm Japanese people. They're kind of, they have like this pride thing. There's something called senpai kohai. And if you are above them and been working at the company longer, you are, it's just a rank thing. You're mm -hmm. technically above the new hires. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I don't really like that. So I would just be really nice to anyone, any new hire. And these new hires would be sexually harassed by higher ups. And they would confide in me and say like, oh, June, like, this guy said that if I sleep with him or if I exchange phone numbers with them, that he'll help me move up in the company. And it makes me feel really uncomfortable because I want to say no, but then I feel like that'll get me in trouble with work or affect my career. And I would be, oh, okay, just leave it to me, sweet summer child, and go up to the higher ups and then nothing would happen. And then those girls would eventually quit. And that happened over and over every time we had new hires. And it really weighed on me mentally because I couldn't do anything for those girls, even though I thought I was, or I thought I could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so intensely frustrating. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God. But yeah. There's nothing worse than like not being able, like seeing a problem occur over and over again like that and not being able to yeah. do anything about it. That's pretty, 
it's pretty especially shitty. as an American where I felt like I, there was an HR department I could go to and it would all be solved. Yeah. But in Japan, like, oh, it's just how things are, June. It's just Japan. Yeah. That's they would always <laughs> say that to me. I'm like, that right. is so bad that you're just like okay with this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious because I really don't know anything about Japanese culture at all. You mentioned that there are some pretty significant differences in, in how um, Japanese business is performed and American business practices. Right. So what were some of the key differences that you saw? Uh, the biggest, well, at least I always thought it was kind of funny and cute is Japanese people would see like Hollywood movies or TV dramas and think, oh, Americans are just really friendly and that's how we should talk uh, to them, even on a corporate level. So I would literally see uh, Japanese people try to interact with these big boss American types and just say like, yo, what's up kind of thing. And I was like, you can't do that. It's totally <laughs> inappropriate. We have like, <laughs> and then they say, <laughs> But on the opposite side with Japanese, it's so polite. Even if we're the same age, um, we're pretty much the same status. If I don't know you very well, it is super, super polite. And there's levels of politeness in the Japanese language and it is intense. There's about like three, four levels. Um, and I, it, but pretty much I think the friendliness or the level of frankness i guess with the comp uh with how you interact with business or on bu on a business level is what i noticed the most um and like gestures or thing or practices like you have to give like a business card when you meet in um in a Jap like in a japanese a japanese person on a business in a business setting versus um if i meet if i met you today it would i hope this isn't disrespectful maybe i've been brainwashed by uh japanese people but i wouldn't have to reach out and get my business card and say oh thank you i hope you know let's, I hope things go well together or something like that. That's how it's translated in Japanese. Like, yeah, no, I, I would not. Working with you. No one has business cards anymore. I was actually thinking about that because I had like a yeah. bunch of them printed up for like AVNs many years ago and I threw them out. Oh so I was like, goodness. when was the last time I gave out a business card? And like, and if someone gives me a business card, I'll be like, I don't, gonna do with it? I don't want that. Like, <laughs> here, you could just give me your phone number. Yes. I'm assuming you're pulling out a business card. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, a, I just, this is how important it is. I'm not going to open it because it's a bunch of private information. But uh -huh. This entire folder is just filled with business cards. And I still just like have tons in here that I just throw and organize later. It is so intense. And I just forget who they, if there's no picture, I don't remember. It's not any yeah. to them. And then I yeah. have mine in here. It is so yeah. important. That's so interesting. Well, I mean, because when I put people in my phone for I can put a note about them, like, you know, I'm a cinematographer. Here. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, right. That's so interesting. So how did you make the jump from working in a corporate world to Jav, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Jav? Uh, you can say Jav. Um, the person who interviewed me yesterday called it Jav. J-A-V. Uh, I, I don't really know. I, I, I say JV. I, I say JV though. I was going to say, yeah. Is it yeah. like, okay. Is, do you because pronounce we say AV. letter? Yeah. I think it's JV, but in Japan, we don't call it JV or a, we call it AV adult. Videos. AV. Yeah. Okay. AV. Right. Of course. You're not going to yeah, call we, it <laughs> Japanese. Right. Of course. Like I'm not exactly. going to say the American Amer porn industry, I'm just going to say porn, the porn right. industry. Exactly. Yeah that kind of ethnocentric thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how did you make that leap? This is the hardest question for me to answer because every time I answer it, I, I feel like what I'm saying is reasonable, but then the people in the comment section are like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Like you're a crazy person, but all I can say is, you know, my, my own truth. So when I worked with that company, it was so bad. And I don't think I ever expressed just how bad it was. Um, and I just didn't feel human anymore. I would come in super early, stay super late around me. Everyone was suffering. I was suffering. And eventually there was like a breaking point. I tried to quit many times, but they, again, gaslit me and said, oh, if you quit, no one else can speak English. No one else can do what you do. The company will suffer. Your coworkers will suffer. We need you. And I would feel like as if I couldn't quit. But I started, I, I'm a very sexual person and a big, big, big pervert. Um, but because of the stress of my work, I couldn't even do anything in my own private time versus like where, it, even if that would be going out on dates and doing something or even by myself. Um, and that was taking a toll on me mentally as well and physically. 
I didn't really have a way to kind of de-stress in that way. Um, and I started thinking every time I tried to leave the company and ask my friends or my coworkers, like, what, there has to be something better than this. And they, they would always say, oh, June, it's Japan. All companies are corrupt. And that really, really sucks. That's insane that everyone can say that with a smile or even come like somehow come to terms with that with themselves. But, um, I started looking around, um, for like sex work thinking, mm -hmm. Hey, if they're all, if I'm getting fucked, I'm going to get paid to get fucked. Like I, I honestly, <laughs> that was where I was at and I wanted to do those things. And I felt if all of them were bad, I might as well make a lot of money and enjoy myself physically if they're all bad. And mm -hmm. I looked around, we have something that's kind of, I don't know, if I've never seen anything like it in America, but it's basically like a red light district and it's all legal. Um, mm -hmm. And you can have like intercrural sex or um, just like the lotion kind of stuff, just anything under the sun, you, you, if you mm -hmm. can imagine it, it's there. But with that, I felt I could maybe, I would have a higher risk of getting like attacked or stalked or worst case scenario, like STDs. And I didn't want that. So I looked at the porn industry and in my mind, I was like, even if this is corrupt and bad, they have SCD checks. You know what you're going to do on set before you do it. It's highly regulated. I have an agency behind me. I would be protected more so than I am right now in my corporate job. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess pervert plus stress from an old job, uh, wanting to get out and just do something fun. Those were my three big reasons. I mean, I you say that people say that that doesn't make sense, but that totally makes sense to me. And by the Thank way, you. I hear, I hear this story here in the States all the time. I think we can probably all agree that pretty okay. much all big corporations are corrupt and company. You know okay. what I mean? Like when it comes to when money is the, I guess money is the main focus of working, right? It's kind of like of a super course. thing to say, but, but I, I just, in court, I mean, corporate America is so corrupt. It's, it's terrible. So I hear, I've heard this story from so oh many God. women who are like, I hated my job. I was working overtime. I wasn't appreciated. I was, some women have talked about being sexually harassed, um, all of those things. And they wanted to go into an industry that first of all, piqued their interest because they were sexual people. I personally think that that's something that's so important. You have to love sex in order to get into the porn industry. Yes. Um, you know, we see people who just like need money and, and it's an easy low bar of entry and easy way to make money. Mm -hmm. I think those are the people that end up regretting doing yes. it because it is, you know, it definitely comes with its negative sides as well. So you need to make sure that it's something that you really want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Asa Akira actually said it best, who is Japanese. Um, she said that, uh, you have to really love having sex to work in the adult industry, because if you don't no amount of money will make the job worth it. Yeah, that's true. You know, because if you don't love what you're doing and you end up regretting it, it doesn't matter how much money you make. None of that. Like if you yep. compromise your own personal integrity and that's different for everybody, yep. um, I don't think any money is worth it. So yeah. So to me, I mean, that story absolutely makes so much oh, sense. Yeah. So it makes some, that makes, that, that, it, that means so much to me, to be quite honest. Good. Good. Um, I'm glad, I'm glad I can help you feel better. Thank you. Honestly, <laughs> I've always, every time I answer people are like June, that doesn't make any sense. But in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but it does. But uh, it does make sense. It does make sense. And also like to ha to do things on your own terms. And there's so many positive sides to working to sex work and mm -hmm. you know, it's so it's, it's, a, it's everyone it's, it's up to, yeah. it's, sorry. It's different for everyone. You right. weigh the good and the bad. Um, so tell me about your first like job. Tell me about that first experience. What were you oh thinking going into that? My first gig? Oh my goodness. Um, fun little side note. I was still working at the like corrupt corporate job and I just took the day off, which okay. was miraculous that they even, no, I think I faked being sick. They wouldn't let me have the day off. So I called and I was like, oh, oh I just don't feel so good. Um, yeah. <laughs> even if they watch this, they don't speak English. So it's like, but anyways, um, I showed up. And my assumption already that everyone there was a part of the Japanese mafia. That's just the kind of image that the industry has. Um, it's not true. I came to find, but that's what I was thinking. And I showed up on set and it was just bright, clean, a nice camera lady, you know, greeted me and said, Oh, this is your first film. I'm so excited to work with you. Thank you for coming. And she was so nice. But in my head, I'm like, 
wow, mafia members are really pretty and they're so nice. I still <laughs> didn't like, and they took me to the makeup room and the makeup artist was like, oh, I'm excited, excited to meet with you. Thank you for coming. And everyone's just very cordial, polite in the corporate level. It's You're like, wow, everyone in the mafia is so, so that's such good manners. <laughs> like, man, I should have joined the mafia sooner. Um, <laughs> But it was just fun. I, I was like a little nervous, not about, and, and I, I say this in other interviews and even to my fans, I wasn't nervous about having sex or getting naked on camera. That was exciting for me personally. And I had no problem. I wanted to get, and I, I'm so sorry, I just wanted to get fucked because I hadn't mm -hmm. in so long because I didn't, I, I couldn't go out and date. And here was someone who wanted to fuck me and they were tested. It was a safe environment. I forgot about the camera and the crew, to be quite honest. I just wanted to have a good time. Um, and the director, I will never forget him. I didn't know how to pose or what kind of smile or what kind of facial expression to do. And there's this famous Japanese restaurant here in Japan called Sushi Zanmai. And it's the commercials always have this old guy going like, Sushi Zanmai. And they're like, do that every time we take a photo. And it just made everyone laugh because I was basically mimicking this almost like a McDonald's commercial to get the smile that they wanted. Uh, and I, I will never forget that. It was so fun. That's amazing. I love that. I love hearing stories. I feel like that first experience in the adult industry kind of marks your path for everything else. So I love yes. hearing people who have a good experience at first, because I feel like that, that leads you along, hopefully the right path for you. So so the, what was your scene partner like? I had multiple scene partners, but the first person that I ever worked with, um, he, he was just jacked and, I, and you don't really see that in Japan and I'm not necessarily into muscles, but he was just like an Adonis kind of body style. Um, very cut, very beautiful. Just looking at him, I was just so moved. I was like, you work so hard on your body. You are beautiful. And again, I, he just said like, you know, I really, I really would like to have sex with you. And it just felt like, even though we were making a film for people to enjoy, it felt like a very intimate and private and exciting experience for me. And it felt really fun to be desired and for someone to accept me desiring them. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a really nice experience. The first scene was just on a bed, on a relatively small bed and just allowing the actor to kind of, and he's a, like one of the big, big, pros here in Japan. Uh, his name is Ikudan. He's very beautiful. Um, <laughs> but just allowing him to just touching, uh, to touch me and uh, do these acts relatively slowly, but I was already just fired up and ready to go. So with most debut films in Japan, either the girl has like no sexual experience or she's a virgin, but I clearly wasn't. And I think things sped up and escalated pretty fast. And I had a great time. Wait, wait, hold on. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. most girls' debuts, they have no sexual experience or they're a virgin? Yes. So, so they, like, in for real? For real, for real. Like, when you said you need to, like, enjoy sex and know yourself and know your own, like, values and, and personal integrity, what is okay and what isn't before you join the industry, I agree with that wholeheartedly, and I'm so glad you said that. But in Japan, the girls, yeah, they might. There's there's two. I've interviewed a bunch of people. Let me, let me bring it back. They mostly come into the industry for money and then regret it. And then I don't want to use this word, but whine and complain about the industry saying that it's bad and all of that, but they hadn't had sex before they went into the industry. So they don't know what they like and what they dislike until it already happens. And they already had a traumatic experience yeah. versus this is another f interesting case in Japan. A lot of virgin girls will want to give their first experience to someone who won't hurt them doesn't have STDs and knows what they're doing. So if I've actually interviewed girls who are like, oh, I really wanted to give my first time to this porn star, this guy, and they will go into the industry just for that. Um, ooh. That is so interesting. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Um, I think it's because of the, I don't want to shame Japanese men, but for overall, I would say Japanese men aren't as gentle if they don't have a lot of sexual experience. And maybe yeah. the people that that girl would know or that person, that actress would know, uh, she wouldn't feel safe or that she could have a good sexual experience. But finding an experienced partner who you know is not going to stalk you, is not going to hurt you once the film is done, they feel like they can actually enjoy it a bit more. 
Mm -hmm. But for me, if you're going to the porn industry, you're kind of throwing away every other option. I can't just go work at a 7-Eleven down the street anymore. Like they're not going to have me. Um, not to say that job is beneath me, but just to show you like those easy entry level jobs that pretty much anyone can get, I can no right. longer do. So just because you want to have a really good sexual experience, you're going to go into the porn industry. I can't really say I agree with that, but that is something that women do in Japan. Yes. And I've interviewed those people. Yeah. That's so interesting. That's crazy. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick commercial break um, and we can come back. We're going to talk about some of the big differences between the American and the Japanese adult industry and um, so much more. So hang tight. We'll see you in a minute. Dave is on a mission to level the financial playing field. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives when we were a little tight on cash. Maybe you could only afford a few gallons of gas in your tank. So understandable, considering the crazy price of gas these days or you got another save the date and you're wondering how you're going to afford a gift. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Get paid up to two days early and get up to $500 advances without paying a fee. Join millions of members building a better financial future by downloading the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. All right, guys, we are back. Before we start, I just want to give a quick shout out to my friend, Danny Daniels, who has started her own coffee company. Um, her coffee's amazing. She sent me like a whole bunch of different flavors. Um, like the BDSM was the first one I tried, which will definitely <laughs> give your tired ass a little spanking and get you up in the morning. Um, <laughs> but go to ddroasters.com to get your own special Danny Daniels coffee. So thank you, Danny. Um, okay. So June, let's talk about what are some of the biggest differences between the Japanese porn industry and the American porn industry off the top of my head. I can say that the one thing that sticks out to me is that you guys blur out the genitalia for the most part. Yes. Is that true? Mm, that is true. Yes. So we're so, not, we're allowed to show, but holes but if you put oh. something in it like a uh, finger or a toy you have to censor it i <laughs> do something outside of the butthole is okay oh huh. oh actually you can gape it so if you have like i don't know if it's in the same word in english but there's something called the anal rose it's the thing that looks like a bud i hope that's the yes. same okay yeah you. yeah yeah i don't do that but that looks painful yeah. but if you if you can show the gaping side if it's just if you insert something or put anything in there you have to put the sensor on it which is insane to me that's crazy. Um, so then when yeah. there's actually like, so is there penetration then going on? There is, but there, a lot of the times, uh, say for example, if an actor can't get it up or, um, if an actress is like feeling pain down there, we can get away with, sometimes we can get away with just faking it. And that is something that's done on set. Oh, wow, man. That would have saved me so much time yeah. on set if I could have <laughs> just faked the penetration. <laughs> I'm so oh, good at faking boy. it. I've had terrible <laughs> private experiences. I am really good at faking it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, okay. So, it has to be censored once there's penetration. And that is, like, across the board. There's no way that anybody can access non-censored penetration oh. clips or anything like that. Oh, my God, Holly. You ask such a good questions. So that's why you're the big boss who makes the big money. So... We can see uncensored stuff online. We don't live in China. And even people in China uh -huh. can access it. I should be careful there. But um, in Japan, it's not blocked. We can see Pornhub. You can log into anyone's OnlyFans. You can log into like Minivids or any of those sites, Fansly. There's uh -huh. no, you just can't produce it and sell it. Or you can't produce and distribute it in Japan. But okay. there are even people in Japan who film uncensored stuff and then just bring it back to their home country where it's legal and upload it. Like they'll use it as a location or a set. Um, but yeah, you just can't, you can't distribute it. That's the law. You can have like a fun, sexy video with your wife or your girlfriend for yourself. But the moment you hit upload, then it's a crime. 
Okay, so if you are based in Japan, you have a studio in Japan and you upload it from Japan online, that's mm -hmm. where it's illegal. Could you film it in Japan, have a studio just outside the borders, send them the footage and they upload it to like a, a website that's well known in Japan? And would that be a way to get around it? Or is that just it's too risky? It's a gray zone. A lot of people, especially with OnlyFans, a lot of Japanese actresses are uploading uncensored stuff on their own content, uh, are on their own platform. And their reasoning is, well, it's on a foreign server and I'm not selling it to Japanese people. But mm -hmm. technically, I, I would feel like that's still illegal. Um, it's something that you, I personally would, wouldn't want to fuck around and find out. But mm -hmm. it's not illegal to film in Japan um, and I would, it's got to be, a, mm, but if you upload to say your foreign company's site and your base, you have like a company based in America, it's again a gray zone, but just filming in Japan isn't illegal. Again, if mm. you took it outside of Japan, that's, that's when it becomes okay. It's okay, just a really, so it's something I wouldn't mess around with. There's a site that was called Caribbean.com, I think. And a lot of Japanese like JV actors and actresses appeared on that. That's uncensored. Um, and they got arrested. So I think if you become too big, eventually you will get caught and you will get fined or go to prison. Right. Yeah. I mean, what, like how insane are the sentences? Do you have any idea? I've only heard like monetarily, it was really painful for some actors. Um, sentencing, I think I only saw like two to three years. Mostly it's just a fine. Yeah. Um, and the worst part is what I heard from an actor friend is that they release your legal name online. So say you have a stage name and you get arrested, the news will say your legal name. And that's very, yeah. very scary for all, some actresses, especially. Yeah. Yeah. They, they do that here. I mean, for sure. If you end up in the news as a porn star and some, they will 100% put your legal name out there. I mean, honestly, like girls name legal names get leaked online all the fucking time. Um, right. It sucks, but it's not illegal. Yeah. So there's not really mm -hmm. a lot you can do about it. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people I have found in my experience working like with some mainstream people, like mm -hmm. mainstream documentarians covering the adult industry, they seem to not understand like the gravity of what we call really? doxing somebody and putting yeah. their legal name out there. They don't, they don't see that because like, look, I'm Tom Cruise. That's not his real name, right? You can look it up. It's Tom. I forget. He's a long last name. Um, but that's like, whatever. He just changed his name because, you know, it sounds better. Tom Cruise sounds better than whatever right. his legal name is. But like, I think there's so much stigma around, you know, adult mm -hmm. performers and there's so many crazy stalkers who like have real issues with porn and, and, you know, threaten violence that, um, you know, releasing somebody's real name and, and so many people in the adult industry don't have the kind of security that Tom Cruise has to protect them. So it can be so dangerous. And I find that people in the mainstream media really don't get that. They don't see it. No, I agree. I agree. I'm so big on privacy. When I, I try to share as much about myself that I can with my, on, or on my platform with my fans, but sometimes I'm sorry, like, I don't want to sound mean, but they ask too much and they, they're entitled. They're, they say like, oh, oh, like, who do you, like, do you live with anyone? Do you have a boyfriend? And I, and I don't, but like, I don't have to reveal everything. I get naked on camera. Like, isn't that enough? Like I'm already as naked Never. as I can be. Why do I have to Never. get naked? Like personally and privately, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Um, so the, I mean, the stigma in the porn industry, I mean, we, like we were just saying in America is, is huge. Is it, I would imagine it's probably pretty big in Japan and it almost sounds like it might be worse. What do you think? Yeah, this is also real. I'm glad you asked that question because for me, when coming to Japan, the most jarring thing for me was that everyone was so shy and talking about sex or even romance was ta taboo like the japanese guys that i would date if i even tried to kiss them on the cheek or hug them in public they would lose their mind they're like no no no, people are looking people are watching don't so you would think oh maybe they're just not used to like sex in their culture if i go out and walk outside right now there are so many sex stores like where you could just hire a woman and do sexual things with her and they're advertising it they, they're not like there's no question of what kind of store this is. There's this, like a little sign on the outside with the rates and everything. Um, there's girls outside on the street passing out flyers 
to their like cafes or their stores, you know, you're going to have a good time kind of thing. So it it's out in the open, but no one wants to talk about it. And everyone's really uncomfortable about it, but everyone's doing it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Porn, I would say I've, I've never worked in the American industry, but porn actresses here are, I would say they're viewed more a, a little bit better by Japanese people than maybe an American porn star is viewed by Amer- regular American people. And the sense that we, I have like a lot of female Japanese fans who are not, not just me, but let's say like a Japanese actress who will have a lot of female Japanese fans who do not watch their films at all and don't support that side of their work. But they're so pretty and they they like them for their aesthetic and their beauty um, and the way that they like hold themselves or present themselves. So I I just feel like there's less of like a dirty image and it's easier for Japanese people to kind of separate the sex side of this person A's work versus in America. I feel like you're always going to be stigmatized and you're always going to be viewed as this hypersexual thing. And when you try to bring yourself away from that the american people won't allow you to do it whereas i feel like japanese people are more a little bit more welcome to it and encourage it um but i could be wrong that's just me from the outside looking in that's interesting so then are you saying that like somebody who works in like basically does porn in japan could possibly more easily transition or do like mainstream films and not necessarily be cast as the stripper 100% that happens all the time and that's happened with people that I've worked with and I've seen it then do the transition before my very eyes and it's comforting because even now um, I recently went freelance and I introduced myself as a porn actress or an adult entertainer but that is not the majority of my work anymore and I I guess you can kind of gain the fame through porn and if you're if you have the skills and the communications and and you're just kind to other people and you work hard show up on time um other routes will like appear to you and i feel like it's easier for us in the jv industry to transition to those other non-adult routes um versus someone in the american industry i, I actually know a girl in the american industry she, we're friends i won't say her name just because i don't want to out her but she is very famous in america but every time she tries to transition a little bit her fans are the ones who complain the most. They're like, no, we don't want to see this. We want to see your pussy. And that just mm-hmm. breaks my heart. That's mm-hmm. she's, She can do both. Like, she's not just a fuck machine for the rest of her life. Why would yeah. you want, if you're a real fan, why would you want that for her anyways? Not yeah. that it's bad, yeah. but not that it's bad to be yeah. born, but she should be able to do anything she wants. God, that's so true. I mean, I've had a few stars on who have transitioned out of the adult industry. Sasha Gray is a perfect example. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, she hasn't shot porn in a long time. She's a very popular Twitch streamer. She has mm-hmm. a successful YouTube channel. She has done um, mainstream movies and uh, TV. And, you know, yeah, I mean, a lot of times when I, in the comments, it's like always referring back to, you know, basically being like, she can't do this because she was once this, like she will always be that girl in the gangbang. Like she'll never, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's sad that you can't just like, let that go. Like let her be, and she's never, and she's, she's not ashamed of her past. She's super grateful for what she has done. Um, it's, it's interesting actually, because there's never really been an incredibly successful crossover here in America. I mean, mm-hmm. people might say Jenna Jameson, but even that I would say no, because mm-hmm. she, the only like mainstream, she did that uh, zombie movie, but she played a stripper, uh, you know, it's yeah. like, they're not letting her move. Away from it's oh, and like every time you see a news, yeah. Or a news story about her, it's always like porn star, even like stormy Daniels. Like it's mm-hmm. always like that tag is always on it. When I think of, somebody who I know personally, who's had an incredibly successful crossover career. I think of Sunny Leone in okay. India. Um, she, you know, was a porn star, was very popular and she was on an Indian dating show. Um, I think it was like a big brother of India. And okay. then she, ever since then she skyrocketed, she does tons of mainstream movies. She does like, she's huge. She's one of the most famous people in India and she hasn't done porn I think it's been like a decade or something. And like, and they won't let it go. No, they're fine with it. Like, I think she, I think, okay. okay, Thank goodness. I think part of her allure is the fact that she did porn, but like she's doing mainstream movies where she's not playing the stripper and everything. That's the problem is here is when you see 
like a porn star do a mainstream movie, she almost always plays the porn star right? or a stripper or some sex worker in, in the movie. Like she right. never gets to play anything else, but that it's like, we can never take them out of that category. So, um, yeah, it's interesting that you say that. I don't, it always blows my mind when I see like comments, like you said, on for Sasha Gray and stuff, because for me, I, I meet a lot of Japanese celebrities and work not with them, but behind the scenes, maybe just meet them at parties. And I would say, not king shaming, but they are far more depraved than anyone I have ever met in the porn industry. And people are like, you know, their fans are like, wow, so pure, so lovely, wow, love you. Uh, but this guy like eats poop and he's a freak. <laughs> like, <laughs> But no, we're the bad guys and we can't do any other work because we've had sex on camera. Like everyone is kinky, everyone's freaky. And yeah. it's, it's just, we, we make a product of it or we sell it and we're, we're open about it, but that, yeah. That's, um, that's what I think it is. I think it's the openness of it. You know what I mean? People are so afraid to be like authentically who they are. And so there's a lot of projection that goes on. I mean, every time I see somebody attack a porn star online, um, or, you know, troll someone, I always think to myself, like, what is, you know what I mean? Like, this is a reflection mm -hmm. of some deep seated issues that you have mm -hmm with your own sexuality. It's always that way. I mean, always. I mean, we see it all the time here in our own politics. You know, we see the politicians who are like, you know, touting the anti-gay agenda. And then turns out they're like fucking dudes in public bathrooms on the down low. <laughs> the most depraved, like just the biggest level of homosexuality, the, the worst side. And they're like, no, we can't have them. But after yeah. this meeting, I will go fuck someone in a bathroom. Like, funny. <laughs> It's just sad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just sad that like people feel like they can't authentically be themselves. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of it probably has to do with us as a society starting to look at, try to look at like a lot of things in a different perspective. You know, I think we're, we're going through a lot of growing pains right now. You see a lot of people complaining about sexual fluidity, gender fluidity, um, you know, we, we like to categorize people and stick them in a box, but I think the more that we allow people to be kind of whoever they are, I think overall, like the happier we all will be. It's just You're so lovely, Holly. <laughs> just on the note of, uh, what a little bit about the JV industry, something that I've actually been told multiple times and even recently is big companies. The biggest issue with being a currently active porn actress is sponsors from big companies like non-adult companies don't want to touch you so mm -hmm. say I've, I've gotten offers for tv shows and but they say oh wait are you still in porn like the sponsors won't allow you or you can't appear on this show you can appear on this show but you can't appear on this show but once mm -hmm. you leave the industry come back to us and that's always crazy to me because i was i you know once i've sucked dick on camera just me leaving the industry doesn't change the fact that i've done that like I'm, mm -hmm. I will always be that person, but mm -hmm. in Japan, a lot of, it seems almost like as long as you're not currently doing it, you're safe and you can, you can do like TV shows and movies and all of that. I just an interesting little side note. Yeah. I mean, that is 100% not the case here. Like once wow. you've done it, you're that person forever. It's, there's actually a really interesting case. Um, mm -hmm. I always forget to like make it's this woman named Nicole. And I forget her last name, but she just won a lawsuit against her school because they oh. basically pushed her out because she was training to be a nurse and they pushed her out because they found out that she was an adult film star and she sued them and she won, which That's is amazing. a landmark case here because it's, it's discrimination, but I think people don't see it that way because they think, oh, well, you know, we see discrimination as people being discriminated against for something that they can't help, like your race or your disability or like, you know, whatever you're born with or mm -hmm. your sexuality, but like you made a conscious choice to do porn. Right. So therefore right. we're allowed to discriminate against you, even though for some people it's not the right choice. Like for this woman, it wasn't the right choice. She was only in the industry for like a year. She, I, I had never worked with her. I'd never heard of her. She had a handful of films. And then she was like, this is not for me. She stepped out and then she went on and tried to get a career doing something else. Oh my God. So she and wasn't she, even currently active. I'm so sorry. No. I thought she was doing, oh my God, the school has no right. She, absolutely not. I, crazy, right? And it's so, because it. this is like the, the hypocrisy of this is what infuriates me too, because you see so often people saying something like, oh, get a real job. You know, you hear that all oh the time. Oh, get a real job. Well, 
She was trying to get a real job. And you she won't did let try her. to leave the porn and you won't let her. You won't let her move on and do something else. Like, yeah. What the fuck? Oh my God, Holly. Yes, exactly. Yes. A hundred percent. That's so infuriating. That makes me mad. I'm smiling, but I'm just I, like in disbelief. I thought yeah. she was currently active, but no, she no. left and people are still like, sorry, no. What did she, what did they expect her to do for the rest of her life? Just die? Mm -hmm. What is, what is it? What's I don't that? know. And it's like, you know, and if you're one of those people who believes that the porn industry is a bad place and that like yes. women need to be saved and, and everything, then why won't you let them move on and do something else with their lives? Like, why won't, why won't you, why won't you let them move on? Yeah. You don't want them to be important. They're no longer important. They're doing what you said they did. They're getting a real job. And like, you still won't let that go. Like, yeah. it's just so unfair. That's an amazing point. It also kind of blows my mind a lot when I see people online, especially with JV, um, Japanese people will do it too. They'll say, oh, this girl was 100% coerced. How could any woman want to have sex on camera? And in my mind, I'm like, no, it's hot. Like, this is wonderful. I... I don't know if it's from the shame that you or the issues, unresolved issues that you mentioned earlier, but people really cannot fathom women having any form of sexuality or any sort of sexual appetite. And as someone in the industry, and every time I see those comments, I'm just like, I just got finished like blowing my, like just like exploding my pussy and you, you can't fathom that I enjoy this. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? I, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's the whole like Madonna, it's the whole like yeah. virgin whore complex thing, you know, either you're a virgin or you're a whore and there's no <laughs> in between and, you know, um, so, so, so actually speaking of, mm -hmm. we see like a much, much bigger stigma against mm -hmm. females in the adult industry versus males, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the whole idea that if a woman has sex with a lot of men, she's a slut, if the men has sex with a lot of women, then he's a stud. Do you, is that do you see the same thing in Japan? You will see the same thing, but I think you'll see more jealousy towards the actors than you will in America. Um, a lot of Japanese guys resent, especially if they are like not Japanese. You will see some nasty comments. Um, they no, actually, yeah, that's a really good point. Okay. So in America, yeah, they might see like, um, is his name Johnny Sands? He's very handsome. I like his YouTube channel. <laughs> yes. uh, like, oh, well, I want to be just like him. I want to do all of that. Um, but in Japan, maybe they might see him and feel threatened and think like, mm -hmm. even though in their mind they want to be him, they might chastise him and say, oh, well, he's he's no good and he won't make a good husband anyways, or he's corrupting women. Um, but you will, It's we, we have the same thing where if a guy has a lot of, like non-porn star, if a guy has sex with a lot of women, he is seen at least in a better light than a woman who has sex with a lot of men. Um, right which I think you'll see in any culture, but versus American, I, um, I think less people will idolize that person and more so be jealous and hateful towards it, that actor or that guy. Does, is there any desire for people in the JV industry to come into the American porn industry? Like specifically guys, because I do hear a lot of, I do get a lot of questions like, why are there not more Asian men in porn? Mm. Do you, do you uh, see a desire for a crossover at all? They want to. I just think I think um, porn companies in America, they won't cover our flights. I've gotten offers to go and film there and I say, OK, we'll pay for my flight as well. And they say, oh, no, no, no. You fly over here and we'll pay you to be in the film. And I'm not dropping two thousand dollars to come work with you. That is yeah. insane. Uh, yeah. Not to mention the, the 10 hour flight and back. I'm not doing that. But I, they people in the Japanese industry they want to work in the American one for sure and I get DMs about it all the time from from actresses especially saying like how can I go over um I think with the guys they even though if we joke about it on set and they're like oh I'd like to go to America and film they're worried about their size because what's considered big in Japan and JFE versus big in American porn are totally different and even mm. though they have the performance skills and all of that they might have some sort of hang-ups about their size um, because there is no censorship, so you, everything will be full glory. And and they might also be worried about getting arrested because, again, it's a gray zone. They're not supposed to be doing uncensored films and, and just appearing in one. Maybe they might feel like, oh, I'm putting myself at risk of getting arrested or fined, even though it's not um, in Japan. They can't, again, like if Jap it's a law, but Japanese people cannot come to America and smoke weed, even though it's legal. They are legally not allowed as Japanese citizens to smoke weed. In oh, anywhere. Interesting. People obviously don't listen to the law, but if, right. you know, 
it's not something you should really promote that you're doing as a Japanese citizen outside of Japan. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Wow. Um, so are there a lot of other American or even just white women working in the JV industry besides you? I, I see a lot like a Melody Marks. She came over and filmed in Japan and then goes back. But people who are in Japan working as a, a white person or even for non-Japanese, I've only ever seen one or two and they're not very active and they don't speak English. So, and they don't, they might speak Japanese, but they're not, they're not as like active with the fan base as like someone like me who is like always talking to my fans every day, like through the discord. Um, so I don't really know much about them, but I have seen one or two. Mm. What are your fans generally like, by the way? Cause you're such a um, unique, you're so unique over there. Thank you. Um, my Japanese fans tend to be, I have a, all across the board and I, it's always weird because with every fan, the way they view me uh, kind of depends on the film that they watched and their own personal kinks. So if they saw me in a BDSM film where I played the more masochistic role, the more submissive role, they'll, they'll come to my events and say, Oh, June, like you're just so submissive. I love it. Like it's so cute to watch like a white girl get dommed by a Japanese guy versus I'll have another fan who watched me in more like a dominant film. And they're like, oh, I love watching you dom Japanese guys. You're just such a dominant beauty. And everyone has this different image of me. And I'm like, oh guys, I'm a switch. Like you're all, you're all right. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, the Japanese fans are just really nice. Uh, the only ones that are kind of an issue are the ones who fall. I mean, this is also an American porn. They fall like in love, in love. And I am always open and say, I will not, suck you off we are not going to date if you're pouring a bunch of money into me you need to stop because you're going to start hating me and that's going to lead to mm -hmm. violence and i don't want that from you um mm -hmm. i have a lot of female fans too which i'm really grateful i'm openly like queer and i always talk about that i love women and in inter interviews in japanese companies they'll say oh, what was your first sexual experience i'll say oh with my girlfriend and they're like no 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 oh with a guy and they, they cut that out cut that out they don't want to hear about any yeah. lesbian stuff um, but a lot of female fans, they don't watch the film so much, but they they like that I openly like women and I talk about it on Japanese television. And it's not like a joke or seen as derogatory. I just talk about my experience and they they really like that. And that's what they gravitate towards. So is lesbian porn not popular in Japan? No, it is, but it's definitely neat, more niche. And you, I don't know what it's like in America, but you get paid much less for lesbian films. Mm. And I... Mm -hmm. you don't see it as much. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would actually go as far as saying that it's, I would think lesbian porn is more popular to a Western audience than it is to a Japanese audience. I would make that bet. Yeah. Lesbian porn is pretty popular over here, but you do get paid awesome. less to do lesbian porn than you do to get okay. them boy girl porn, which sort of makes sense because they're, you know, the penetration with boy girl porn, like is harder on your body. So yeah, I guess in that sense, maybe that can makes see sense. It. But it's still, yeah. you're still getting up at the whatever crazy time to make the shoot and then putting on yeah. all that makeup. The effort is still just, that it's still there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, the idea, there's an idea around American porn actresses that they make a ton of money. And some of them certainly do, especially now with OnlyFans. Um, is, it, is the same, is it the same in Japan? Like, is the pay pretty good? I would say... Oh, actually, we have a new law where it makes the pay. It recently passed this month. Makes the pay. I'm going to talk before that law, just my own experience. Okay. I would say it's not worth it. You will make a lot of money, but um, it's only for a set amount of time. And eventually, if you don't get popular, you won't. Like it, in the American industry, too, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to make any money or get any offers. And after that, what are you going to do? Because you've essentially locked yourself out of any other career choice. Um but as far as per film, we'll make anywhere from like 2000 to on the high end, maybe 4000. But we, in Japan, we have these things called agencies and the agencies will take anywhere from 50 to 70 percent uh, a cut. And then you have to pay taxes twice because there's two kinds of taxes in uh, in Japan. There's like an income tax that the company takes on top of that. And then some kind of like uh, country tax afterwards that you pay on your own afterwards. And a lot of girls, they don't pay that country tax later. Um, essentially like evading taxes, but I pay both. So it was a really big cut for wait, something that wait. was working. Yeah. Agencies <laughs> take 50 to 70%. Yes. So if you get 
a thousand dollars for a film, you walk away with just 500 smackaroos. Yep. How is that? How? And you cannot survive in the industry. Yeah. I, you cannot join the industry without an agency. I I'm freelance now, but only because I made a huge name for myself and was able to leave that and keep my, my name, June Lovejoy. The agency doesn't get to keep that. That's my name. And I was able to move forward in the industry, but you cannot just debut by yourself. You have to go through an agency. Like companies will not touch you. When I say companies, I mean studios. Interesting. I mean, it's, it's not exactly the same here. It's definitely easier to start with an agency. Um, but if a beautiful girl, I mean, you know, if a beautiful girl was to write to me and say, you know, when, especially when I had my own studio, I mostly just shoot for like browsers and twisties now, but I would mm-hmm. actually probably refer her to them. If she sent me an email and was like, I want to be porn and she was gorgeous. I would like totally book her on my own. I wouldn't need an agency okay. or like a studio might sign her because Nice. So you can definitely, but it, it is easier to start with an agency just also okay. too, because like, I mean, for a multitude of boring reasons, but you could definitely start on your own. It would just be harder, but you're saying like studios will not hire you if you don't, they will not touch you at all. I, I, I would honestly say 99.9% impossible to start without an agency because agencies are really afraid of um, being flaked on, like say they have like the studio, they get all the actors, the makeup artists, they yeah. poured all of this money and the girl just doesn't show up. Well, if an a- if she's through an agency, they can demand the money from the agency. And it's easier to demand thousands of dollars from a big company than from one girl who just ghosted you. Oh, so- interesting. Okay. So the agency actually pays the, um, the losses. Cause that doesn't yes. happen here. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't happen here. If a girl doesn't show up to set, the agent's like, "Oh well, oh, like, my God. What's sorry." The point? <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and there'll be there was only one agency that would actually pay like some kind of kill fee. Okay, um, but it was only like a couple hundred dollars. But otherwise, they'll be like, "Oh well, sorry. Well, here's who else I have." But yeah, they one hundred percent do not cover your losses. Absolutely not, and they will That's represent crazy. a girl who will flake continually. And there's quite a few girls in the industry with this reputation. And if you work in porn, I don't need to say their names. You know who I'm talking about. There are some girls who like you book them and you're like, will she show up? I don't know. Like it's a crapshoot. Oh my God. Yeah. You get yeeted out of the industry so fast. If you pull that here in Japan, no matter how beautiful, talented, how many fans you have, because it's expensive. Yeah, it's, it's, I know. It's, it's, I you of all people know. I, I, I wish know. that I wish that we were a little bit stricter about it because there are some girls that are just like, but they're popular and they're beautiful, but they like may or may not show up. Like wow. they are well known to be flaky, and fucking studios will still book them and wait around and hope they show up. No. And yeah, yeah, and I, they'll still get work. They will I not get blacklisted. It's crazy. Being here, because I feel like I'm learning, because I I don't know anything about the American industry, except from what I hear, maybe from like Melody Marks, or maybe a little bit other like porn star friends. Uh, I That is insane. Yeah. So that's why agency, or sorry, studios will not want to touch just some random, beauty, no matter how beautiful she is. They'll mm-hmm. say, oh, we can introduce you to a nice agency and then go through them. Um, mm-hmm. what it, there are good things about being in an agency. You don't ever really No way. Actually, that's a lie. You still have to show your private information to the studio. When you sign a contract, I was going to think maybe there's a level of anonymity, but no, there's no reason like agencies are just dumb. Honestly, I think they're the worst mm-hmm. part of the industry in Japan. Yeah, they can be problematic here too. And then you get some shady agents that it's better now. I feel like okay. it's, honestly, ever since only fans came along too, yeah. and girls have a lot more personal, like yeah. agency, they, um, the agents are a little bit better. Um, there's a couple in, of really good too. ones, but there's a couple of ones that are like, like, even like I hesitate booking girls from that agency. Cause I'm just like, oh. eh, you know, and like, I don't know. It's, but, um, I still think 50 to 70% is, is cuckoo. Um, but, uh, if they're paying the full, like that's true for the day, Mm. like that makes more sense to me because that definitely does not happen here. Um, do you have any interest ever in like doing anything in the American porn industry or are you happy where you are? 
I, I would love to do stuff abroad, but, and I might be wrong. I just feel like my body type um, wouldn't do so hot over in America where I, this is my image, but a lot of people have like plastic surgery or like lipo and have like really beautiful, perfect bodies where in Japan, it's better to have like a more natural body. Um, Japanese people really do not like the plastic surgery look, even if it's a little bit subtle. I mean, it has to be intensely subtle. Um, I've gotten offers for stuff in America, but again, they just won't cover the plane fee. They'll, and then the mm. cost to do the film is just not worth it. It wouldn't even, even just to appear in the film, it would not cover the, the, the amount of money that it would even cost to be there or fly there. Um, yeah. but the desire yeah. is there. I might just do only fans collabs with, um, like that's if, reach out. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Because then you could get some really like you know, different girls on your platform. That seems to be right. the way that most people go anyways. Can yeah. I ask approximately how much a girl makes to do a boy girl scene in Japan? Like yes. her scene? So actually recently I met with uh, a porn star and she was telling me about how much she got paid. And she kept saying by scene in Japan, we don't do by scene. There isn't, this is how much it costs for a blowjob. This is how much it costs for a sex scene. It's for the entire film. So I, I don't have this thought or this mindset of, this scene equals this. It is for the entire day. And yeah, the more times I have sex, I'm like, well, yeah, let's bump it up a bit more. But okay. from the, I would say the average is probably 2000, 2500 for a full day of shooting. So you're making a 160 minute film. Um, but that isn't how much they're filming. And that, that includes like the promotional photo shoot, um, any, any package photos, um, plus the sex scenes. So maybe two sex scenes and then like three, somewhat like erotic scenes, but they're not penetrative scenes. What? Come here. Interesting. So an entire film is generally based around one girl. Is that how it works? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's not that way in America. Yeah. We, we make like an entire DVD, um, with like a setting or some sort of story and it's an entire day of filming. I've actually had a 24 hour shoot before. Um, yeah, completely 6am. Okay. 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 That's happened here too <laughs> on features, <laughs> but it's, unless it's, so we call that a showcase. If it's a okay. film completely around one girl, okay. that's called a showcase. And that's generally not terribly common. It's usually like <gasps> to get a showcase is a big deal. So okay. like if you're really popular, um, and to get like your first showcase is a big deal, but yeah, wow. it's not all that common. I mean, you'll only get a couple of showcases probably in your entire career. Otherwise you're part of either a DVD compilation, wow. um, like, you know, big titty squirters or something right. like that. You yeah, have yeah. big tits and squirt, but you'll be <laughs> in only in one scene out of five, That's but also, and also too, though, since DVDs are like so much less popular now, and it's all about internet scenes, you're pretty much just hired for one scene. So like when I shoot a day for browsers or for twisties, I'm only shooting one scene. Okay. That's it. And the girl comes in for one scene and then it goes up on the internet, but it might get on a comp, they put on a compilation DVD somewhere down the line, but that's not the main focus. The main focus is that it's a scene on an internet on a website that updates like once a week. Can I, I know like your listeners clearly already know the answer to this, but just for my sake, can I ask how long do you film the scene and how much of that do you actually end up using? Just because I yeah. only know a day we, I did everyone debuts with the showcase. That's all we, we have. Yeah. So, um, uh, it depends on the company. It depends on the producer and how efficient you are. My days are generally about 10 hours, 10, 12 okay. hours. And that includes the promotional photos, like you mentioned, okay. um, the sex scene photos, uh, because what I shoot for twisties and browsers is generally not like what we call a gonzo scene where it's just the sex, there's yep. dialogue, there's a whole storyline, there's an intro. Mm -hmm. So all of that's what takes the longest. The sex scene only takes me like an hour to film and okay. we'll cut it down to, you know, usually they, the scenes are about 25, 30 minutes, okay. um, long, but, um, it'll take me, 12 hours to shoot mm. a 30 minute sex scene because of just everything that goes into makeup is two hours, right. you know, all of that stuff. So set up breakdown. It's so interesting that the length of time that you're filming is more or less the same that we film, but the amount that we're filming is more and the amount that we use is more, but our days yeah. are pretty much 
10, 10, 12 hours, same. But is there a lot of like, is there dialogue and a lot of setup where you shoot in this room and then you shoot in that room and then you shoot in that room Yeah. and then you have to turn, move all the equipment around to shoot this camera angle and huh. But you got, well, maybe you guys are just way more efficient at filming than we are. I would say Japanese people are more efficient than American people. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I would say I would die on that hill. Oh God. You guys have a bunch of Mike Quasars over there. We, we we do not people show up on time for sure if you mess up if you don't show up even if as a crew or makeup artist that spreads so fast and they will not hire you again because no one has time to wait around like you told me you know you guys are like maybe she'll come maybe she won't that is insane i would never hear about that yeah in, in japan yeah and i mean we have you know like there are definitely people are don't it is not uncommon for the model to be late Wow. Like not at all. It's not uncommon. I mean, my crew members are not like this. I'm pretty okay, thank goodness. strict, strict on this, but like, I definitely know ma- I've worked with makeup artists who are like, they're late. They're like 30 minutes late. And I'm like, <sighs> and, and then I talk to somebody who's worked with them a lot. They're like, yeah, they're always like 30 minutes late. I'm like, the model can be 30 minutes. I mean, she shouldn't be, but the model yeah. can be 30 minutes late, but the fucking makeup artist makeup better be artist. there on time. Like, thank uh-uh, you. that's not yeah. okay. Makeup so, artist is usually there first and it's usually yeah, no the makeup artist. Yeah. We need you there first. Up. Yeah. And we can't do anything until the model's out of makeup. Yep. Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That's insane. Oh my God. I'm so glad I get to talk to you because I don't really know anything about the American. And I, I know you're asking me about the Japanese side, but yeah, you're blowing so my mind. Yeah. You're blowing my mind. Look at us just blowing <laughs> each other's minds right here. <laughs> I hope the <laughs> listeners totally, are blown too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, June. This has been so incredibly interesting. I really appreciate you making the time for, to come on. Thank you. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Do you have anything special coming up that you want to promote? Um, you can find me on Twitter, mostly YouTube as well. I I do my own interview series where I interview people in the JV industry. I use Reddit, pretty much every social media. You can find me Instagram as well. The biggest thing that I've started recently, and it's kind of been something that I should have done sooner, but, uh, I started in OnlyFans and it is uncensored. Um, I did go to America and film a bunch and I am going to work really hard on that now. I'm really excited. And if you'd like to see my OnlyFans content and support that, you can find me there. Big things that are coming. Um, I mentioned in the interview, I don't do as much adult stuff anymore. Um, not that I don't enjoy it. Just my other work is taking more of my time. I'm actually producing a movie. It's not my movie. I, I'm just on the team as a producer for this movie for like Netflix. And um, we'll start filming next year. So I'm excited about that. And I'll start releasing more information as that comes, uh, as as I can as I'm allowed to do so. So mm-hmm. please stay tuned. And yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Do you have like one website that everybody should go to get all of your links or where, where should I, where can I send people to find you? Like oh, specifically? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Cause I'm like shadow banned. So even if you search June Lovejoy, there is junelovejoy.com. That site is janky beyond all compare because I made it myself. Um, you can go there whether or not something works is to be <laughs> determined at a later date. Uh, I really want to fix it. I just don't have time. And I'm afraid to hire someone. I have like big hangups on that. What you don't have like an, all my links page or something like that. That just has I do have like a link tree. I have a link tree, all my links kind of thing. I can make uh-huh. an all my links for the sake of this interview. Is that a site? All my links. I, I think it is. It is, but okay. link tree is the same exact thing. Okay. I do have so, a link tree. Okay. Is it just, what what's the url one moment oh you have to look it up I just, no i, I got <laughs> you don't know this by heart link tree slash june love joy <laughs> like the month love uh, and joy okay all right so <laughs> link tree is it link it's linktree.com it, right it's link tree it's showing up as link tree link tri, dot ee they're not making it easy for us on the podcast Okay. Okay. That's fine. Ernie's lovely. He's going to put a little, uh, uh, thing at the bottom. He always Thank puts you. like text at the bottom, really but nice. I just wanted to find out what it was. So he didn't okay. have to like go searching and try to find it. Okay. So it's linktree.com slash June Lovejoy, And then people can find all of your social media and everything there. Yes. Thank Perfect. You. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. 
Awesome. And then you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Believe it or not, I'm still on TikTok. I haven't been banned yet, even though that warning is hovering there. Every day I log in and it's like account warning. We hate you, but I'm still there. So go to Holly Randall Unfiltered on TikTok and um, you can watch all short little clips from my podcast while I'm still while I'm still on there. And then of course, if you want to support the show and uh, check out all of these interviews, either before they're released or live as they're being streamed from in studio, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week.